probably don't know the answer to this, but are there any of the combat missions that you're able to talk about or all of them are still classified? Mm, I'm trying to think of one that was... The hard part is I can tell you about certain missions, but the difficult thing is explaining what I was doing and I can't tell you what I was doing. And so... Right. Uh, right. <laughs> So yeah. it's not to say I guess, that I guess maybe, maybe we could wade in and try one and see and see how vague this gets. <laughs> but yeah. I'd love I'd love the idea of um, knowing like it, like a like a vague objective, and then how would you go about it, and what what part would be more most precarious? Because I can imagine if you're on the front line of anything classified as a war, that's the most vulnerable position. So like you said, you're in the top three people trying to show people where to go. If you turn left instead of right by accident, or if you turn right when you're supposed to go right, but there's someone waiting for you, like that's, you know, that's, I'm sure I can't even fathom the, the amount of intensity in those sorts of situations. So I, I'd be curious to hear what one of these missions uh, looked like as much as you're I, able I think, to tell. okay, so here's an example. I, I, this isn't, this may not be the, the most sexiest of examples, but this kind of summarizes uh, the stress of what happens. Okay, so we, when I was in, I was in Basra, Iraq, and Basra has a lot of, as a lot of Iraqi cities do, they have a lot of low hanging power lines. And so depending upon where we wanted to go in the city, we, we had to take a certain type of vehicle. We preferred to take what were called the RG 33s, which were the M wraps, which had the V shaped hull on the bottom in case you hit an IED. It was, it, it was designed to take the hit, right? So you're okay. much safer in an RG 33. The problem is RG 33s are huge and they have this thing on the top called the crows, which is a, a remote operated weapon system that allows you to control the gun from inside with a joystick. And then they have these antennas sticking off the back. So your vehicle, instead of being like, like eight or nine feet off the ground, your vehicle is now like 15 feet because of the antennas and things like that. Right. It's just way up there. Okay. And so right. certain parts of the city you couldn't go to. And I had this equipment that had to run off of a uh, power source internal to the vehicle. And so they would be like, hey, uh, we're going to be heading out to this area of the, of the city tonight. Uh, I need you to go install in the RG. And so I'd be like, okay. So I'd run my gear out. I'd prep it. I'd get it all locked in. I'd get it set up. I'd have my laptop set up in a spot so I could get access to it. And uh, everything was hooked up inside the vehicle and ready to go. I'd turn around, come back in the building. And at this time, we were actually based out of the, what we called the Basra Palace Complex, which was the former palace of, I think it was Uday Hussein's wife. And it's okay. right on the Euphrates. And so we lived in this huge palace. It was crazy because you walk in, there's a gargantuan American flag hanging from the ceiling. And then it's empty. <laughs> the whole building's like gutted, except for all these American personnel living throughout. There's a big gym and there's one other back room. There's a tactical operations center. And so the, ba the Basra Palace itself was, was amazing. And then uh, right next to it was a waterway that gave us access to the Euphrates. So we would jump into our boats and we would actually go through the Euphrates and do our infiltration for our missions from the river. And in the middle of the night, which was amazing. It's a great feeling to be just cruising around on the river at night like that on in what are called um, sock R, special operation craft riverines, which are these fast attack boats in the, for the river. And so that was right across the street from us. So we literally walk out of the palace and could jump in our boats and then go straight on the mission if we didn't want to use the vehicles. Uh, but this particular night I had to use I, I was I, we were I set prepped the Humvee and then RG and then we walked back in and they said, sorry, man, we're going we realize we're going to take the Humvees instead. So I need you to take all your, so that, that once they told me that, I was like, okay, now I got to rip all my gear out of the RG and put it in the Humvees, but the Humvees, the batteries are underneath the front seat and you open it up and the batteries are in series. So now you've got a problem. Make sure that you're not overloading your system by putting too many, too many, hooking it up to too high a voltage because you're running, you know, it's a 24 volt system or whatever it is. Right. And so you're like, yeah. all right, so I'm, now I'm playing electrician trying to hook these things up and all I have are these alligator clips, but I've got to put the seat back down. So the guy that gets the vehicle can sit down on it, but I don't want him to sit down on it so that it knocks off my cables at the same time. I don't want him to get electrocuted. I also don't want to start a fire. And so I'm trying to settle these things up at the last minute and they're not designed for this installation because this equipment has to come separate. And so I, I set it up and I finally get it in place and I run back in and they're like, okay, Jim, we're going to the RG 33 again. And so now, now I've got to rip it back out of the Humvee back into the RG and I get into the RG and I get it oh all prepped God. and we're five minutes away and I'm trying to do an op test of the equipment and none of it's working. We're five minutes from go and the gear that is the linchpin to the entire mission isn't working. It's off. It's, it's off. Like I'm, I'm trying to run a test on it and it's not doing its job. And so the question I have then is, do I tell everybody that we're, that we're dead in the water 
and make them all wait? Um, or do I just keep plugging away for a little bit longer and see if it'll go? And this was always the debate. Do I hold things up making it because there's the problem. You might be able to get it to work, but, uh, so <laughs> it's just the dilemma. Like, do you, the default state would be like, Hey, tell everybody <laughs> to hold up. We're not going to do anything until this is working. But sometimes you're like, this is time sensitive. Like you better just figure right. it out on the fly. What are you going to do that's different while we sit here than a, what you're going to do while you're driving down the road? And the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> right. 